Wasn't can you just tell us how you got recruited for this match? Uh, obviously, Australia is my second home, Melbourne. My wife is from Melbourne. Uh, I've got a call from Kevin, the Cricket Australia CEO. Uh, obviously, he took uh, my contact from my missus, Shanira. And I was here in November uh, for the for the Pakistan series. Found out then, and then I was here in December as well for a week and a half. Uh, realized the devastation uh, uh, has happened with this bushfires. 186,000 acres has been burned, and obviously the families, the the, the animals, and uh, the idea was to come and raise funds for those victims as much as we can. So that was the idea. Only came out for a day, long trip, but worth it. And Brian, same question to you. Uh, well, I, brought you over here. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I must say um, to, to Shane Warren for what he's done with his baggy green and um, the amount of money he's raised. So it's been um, pretty much an a lot of people around the world minds what's happening in Australia and um, a lot of my friends in the Caribbean say you know you've seen what's going on in Australia and um, you know nothing you can do being that far away but when I heard about the match and there was a little bit of a um, contact made to my manager here and immediately I said you know I am available and um, yeah uh, they reached out to me first of all uh, Phil Head from uh, the SCG and um, then Kevin as well so it's um, it's something that I was not going to miss you know if I could if I had the privilege to, and honor to play in such a match I wanted to be here. These guys are keen I just saw yesterday on uh, social media him and Ricky Ponting practicing <laughs> come on guys I'll be 54 next month in a couple of months I haven't moved my arm for two two years now but tomorrow I'm probably able to bowl about six deliveries if they've been nice to me, him and Ricky. But they're on my side anyway. Yeah, we understand. I'm very happy about that because it's one of the bowlers um, during my career that you know I did not look forward to, to facing. I didn't mind if Inzema was at slip because he, he was going to drop them. <laughs> you remember that in Trinidad? It was yes, good. I do. So, but, um, it's great, to, it's great to be again in this sort of atmosphere with uh, some of the greatest players that have played the game and for, for the purpose. As I said, you get me here every day. I remember that, and actually, I, I before that, four years earlier, I stayed in a, in Mildura playing the Youth World Cup, and I stayed with a family there. And uh, he, uh, Claire is his name. He was only maybe about six at the time. He has the shoes. He said, Brian, he's bringing it to Melbourne. From uh, you know, I might get you to sign it. He he's should. got his shoes, and he's coming up tomorrow. So um, I had to cut a hole in my Reebok to play the next match. I remember that. He appealed way outside the Austin, but he was still appealing. <laughs> because you guys won that game by 10 wickets. I needed, we needed a wicket and that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what, you know, um, first of all, um, you know, even myself and Ricky, the first thing you said, you don't miss it. I don't miss the sport, but the minute you put the pad on and the glove and you, you start to move your feet and get going, it's just an amazing feeling. Everything comes back for that moment. So uh, it makes tomorrow you know, more exciting on a personal note as, as a former cricketer to get out there and see if I can get some runs in, you know, a few balls. There's only a few balls, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not five days. Yeah, no, no. Brian, how, how serious is, uh, is Ricky taking this match? He takes everything seriously. Ever <laughs> seen him play golf? <laughs> everything seriously. And uh, we played uh, three games in America a few years ago. And um, it was as serious as, as it comes. So um, he's what sort of guy. He's actually the one that got me out into the net. I was thinking golf, he said cricket, then golf. <laughs> is it weird wearing the green and gold though, given you, you know, the, the, the tension with Australia for so many years, you, you're running out of green and gold? And I wore, I wore the green, the, the, the helmet and the nets as well. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, looks cool. I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. You know, um, Canary yellow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Australian gold, my friend. <laughs> what about you, Was him wearing the green and gold? Yeah, it, it, it looks cool. The colour is beautiful. Uh, uh, we played a lot against, a, a lot, lots against this colour, but it's good to be in these this colours as well. Being yeah. being second home, being Australia, so yeah. And Was him, I believe you played at this ground many years ago. Can you tell yeah, us I did. That? Yeah. that was, I think, three-day game against Victoria, if I remember. Uh, maybe I don't remember the exact year, but it was a very different ground then. Now it looks proper, proper cricketing ground. Beautiful oval. Look at the outfield, the square. I think those days it was uh, early on. Only the dressing room and this stand was there. But now you've got a beautiful... And it's such central area. And it was a three-day game. Uh, it was a cold day as well. You know, cold Melbourne day. Didn't enjoy it as much then. 
Brian, you might remember um, the 94 testimonial match where you um, got out to yes. Zoe Goss. <laughs> are you, um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you make of how far the women's game has come? It's amazing to see the level of cricket, first of all. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's improved over the years and um, it's gotten to a stage where it's, it's, the intensity is amazing and the performances. You know, some great records are being created by, by the women. The cricket associations around the world, I want to say, you know, congratulations to them because without their support, you know, the game could not uh, have grown to the level it has. So it's going to be a wonderful World Cup. You know, um, everyone's looking forward to this uh, sold out finals. It's going to be amazing if it happens. Um, I'd, I'd love to urge all Australians and anybody who's traveling for, for the World Cup to make sure and uh, take in a bit of it. But it's, um, it's just great to see the way how they play the cricket. And you've got uh, teenager Phoebe Litchfield on your team tomorrow. I don't know if you've had a chance to see her play at all. But... Not yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm any, looking forward to it. Any, any words that you would share with uh, a, a rising star? Well, first of all, I just don't want anybody to try to repeat a Zoe Goss. <laughs> that's all. That's all I don't want. Don't, don't come <laughs> searching for my wicket tomorrow, right? Um, but um, it's, you know, whatever form or whatever sporting discipline that you're involved in, you've got to maybe... You you not maybe you got to give a hundred percent all the time discipline dedicated so to any young uh, cricketers male or female you know that's the one thing that I urge you to do make sure and commit yourself the discipline the hard work that's the only way you're going to get to the top. Okay, Wasim, well, you've won a World Cup in Melbourne. Special place. You've got family connections. Uh, bring back some fond memories. Always, whenever I come to Melbourne, especially at the MCG, all that ground always has been very close to me. I think uh, my personal one day best as, as far as batting concern was uh, with the MCG, the World Cup final, the Carlton and United final as well, be winning there against the great Windies. Uh, but yeah, it's, for, it's one of, it's actually my favourite grounds ever. Uh, people say Lords, people say Cape Town, but for me, MCG always has been and always will be. The sheer, it's just the sheer, uh, uh, you know, the, the when you enter the ground, when you see 100,000 people watching, it's a different feeling altogether.